From the entryway, the Morton family had access to the Red Library, also painted in colors inspired by nature. The deep red walls preserved indoors the glow of the Midwestern sunset. The gold ceiling above was the sunrise. In contrast to the painted colors were beautiful wood tones. The beams overhead were crafted of fumed oak. Fuming was a natural oxidation process by which wood, stored in an enclosed space, acquired a warm luster without the use of stain or varnish. Also in the Red Library were endless bookcases that lined the room's walls and the leather-topped mahogany table. The table was a gift to the Morton family from then-President Theodore Roosevelt and was used as a writing desk. Arbor Lodge's reception room or drawing room was also entered from the entry hall. Here, the Mortons visited their guests amid walls covered with floral silk tapestry purchased by their son, Joy Morton, while in Paris. All eyes were drawn to the impeccable mirror above the reception room's fireplace. Backed with diamond dust instead of the customary silver, the mirror gave the illusion of being an open portal to the next room. Above the piano was a portrait of Caroline Morton. On the opposite side of the same wall was Jay Sterling's image. Here, the reception room, like the entryway and red library, was illuminated by bracketed Tiffany lamps. On either side of the reception room's expensive fireplace and mirror were French doors. Through those doors, the Mortons entered one of Arbor Lodge's most spectacular rooms, the sunroom. Yet another stunning view loomed overhead in the sunroom. A Tiffany ceiling panel of stained glass, designed in a trellis and grapevine motif. In one of the oldest sections of the mansion, Jay Sterling established his private office. Nearly all of Morton's time was spent reading or writing. His official positions ranged from President of the Nebraska Board of Agriculture to Secretary of Agriculture on President Grover Cleveland's cabinet. This office afforded him a comfortable space in which to do his important work. The handcrafted oak bookshelves in Jay Sterling's office were incised at their corners with the letter M, using the primitive method of mallet and chisel. When he was home at Arbor Lodge, Jay Sterling often worked in his private office. At his desk, Jay Sterling drafted many important articles and documents, including the resolution that founded the celebration of trees is now known around the world as Arbor Day. Near his desk, adjacent to a bay of south-facing windows, was what in Caroline Morton's day was known as a fainting couch. In this beautiful room, with its hardwood floors and custom wallpaper, they enjoyed the very best of modern technology. There was a stereo opticon for viewing stereo photographs in three dimensions and an Edison Amberola for playing music recorded on amber cylinders. In the dining room at Arbor Lodge, Jay Sterling and Caroline Morton were joined by Grover Cleveland, William Jennings Bryan, and countless others significant in the shaping of America in the 19th century. In 1923, the Morton's eldest son, Joy, donated the home and grounds to the state of Nebraska, which continues to maintain Arbor Lodge as a state park and historic landmark. J. Sterling Morton's legacy, Arbor Day, was a lasting gift to all who came after him. Arbor Day is not a political holiday or a religious holiday. And one of the most famous quotations of J. Sterling Morton is his statement, other holidays repose on the past. Arbor Day proposes for the future.